And Rhi, the question that we have for you today is, what is an assumption that educators have made about you that you would like me to know is not true? Boy, educators have made a lot of assumptions about me, but one I think resonates every time I'm in lecture is when a teacher asks, do you have any questions? And I don't actually voice my questions. It doesn't mean that I don't have any questions. <laughs> um, usually the reason why I don't voice my question is I'm about 10 to 20 questions deep by the point they ask me, um, do you have any questions? So I don't even know which one to begin to ask. So, and I don't wanna interrupt the presentation flow. So I just omit my question. Earlier in my academic career, when I omit my question, I would do exactly that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about what questions arise. <laughs> I wouldn't revisit my lecture notes to get those questions resolved. And no wonder tests and assignments were hard because I think those questions were um, the learning opportunities I needed to seek out and address so that learning can occur. Um, with that being said, I am understanding the beauty of questions and I am understanding the importance of tracking my own questions and finding help and seeking help to get those questions resolved, whether it's forming study groups, going to office hours, or going into tutoring. Um, I promised myself to blog on the idea of questions, and actually Catherine and I have created a few videos on questions. I can link in the description below. So questions are really cool. Take good care of your questions. Track them. It's okay if you your professor doesn't really provide the genuine time <laughs> to get those questions responded. Just know that there are people in your class or at your tutoring centers that can get your questions resolved. But track them. Well, acknowledge them, track them, and seek answers. <laughs> so Henry, when you, when you say that um, you're recommending that students track their questions. What exactly do you mean by that? What, is, what does that look like? How do you know which questions to track? So one form of note-taking, a uh, pretty traditional form is I think the Cornell note-taking method. And they liter you literally dedicate a column to not only um, highlight the main points of a slide or some segment of lecture and content delivery, but you also can write questions related to what you don't know um, or what you what didn't make sense when the teacher was talking. So for me, that literally is like writing out um, and highlighting, like what is it specifically that I don't know, right? I think I remember in office hours, Jeff Anderson once asked me, when I was asking him, like, I don't understand what's going on in this class, he asked me, like, what is it specifically that I don't understand? And the more specific we can get with our questions, the closer we will actually be in finding an answer, finding a valuable answer, because you might actually be able to answer it yourself when you get really specific on what is it exactly that you don't know, with the help of inquiry and research, or when you do ask a more refined specific question to your tutors, to your teachers during office hours, or to your study partners, you will be, um, you already have sussed out the other layers of quote unquote prerequisite knowledge. So tracking questions is writing down, during a live lecture, writing down the questions um, as soon as they arise. I would say maybe equally, if not more important than writing down lecture notes. What I like about that is that it's also, um, that, that practice really forces us to be um, sort of like metacognitive about what it is that we're actually learning. Um, and you were, you were explaining what Jeff Anderson had you do, which was to like explain in more detail what it is that you weren't understanding, um, which I think is a really great way to, um, 
to really think about like, okay, what is it that I'm not understanding? Which also begs the question, what is it that I do understand? Um, and both of those are really valuable questions. This is, um, we were just talking about common sense for, I don't know, science. <laughs> so like you would think the advice of, or the, the, I don't know, the question of what is it exactly that you don't understand is common sense, but it isn't until you hear it from someone you trust and someone you admire and you respect where you really start thinking like, yeah, what is it that I don't understand? Is it the syntax? Is it the context? Is it the, how it is being applied to this problem? Like I have kind of amazed myself when I go deeper in thinking and deeper in questioning the robust answers I receive. So it is not common sense to ask yourself, what is it exactly that you don't know? So I encourage you to ask yourself, what is it exactly that you don't know? When, I mean, you might not be able to do that in a live lecture, right? Cause you will go down the rabbit hole and you'll miss the entire lecture. So capture the overall question and then think about it in the context of the presentation and the lecture and then, and then go deeper which means you actually have to revisit your lecture notes, believe it or not. Great. Thanks so much, Henry. Thanks, Catherine.